MMM, I can't wait to eat. I actually finished eating. That was so good. What's going on? Are you drunk? No, I'm not. How rude. Now here is a question for you. It's a very important question, so you need to answer carefully. What was I eating just now? I have literally no idea. How could I know that? It doesn't matter. Just try to answer the question. Whatever comes to mind, anything is okay. Why are you acting weird? You're giving off a weird vibe right now. Like I said, I have no idea what you ate and I don't really have an answer for you. But I guess if you put a gun to my head. Did you eat a burger? That's your guess? Absolutely not. That's way too obvious of an answer. Come on, you gotta think harder than that. You told me it could be anything. Why are you making fun of my answer? OMG, I really don't have time for this. So, what's the answer to this stupid question? I'm busy right now. I don't have time to play any of your stupid games. Are you just bored because your children are sleeping now? Are you doing this to kill time or to annoy me on purpose? A little bit of both, I guess. Just answer. Did you get possessed by an obnoxious spirit or something? What's up with you? Can you like hurry up and answer already? OMG, I'm just going to shut my phone off if you keep texting me. I really don't know or care what you ate. Stop being such a sour pus. If you'd hurry up and make a guess, it'd make it so much easier. You. Well, what do you think? If I answer, will you stop being so annoying? I don't know. A pizza? That's my final guess. If you make me say anything else, I'm going to ignore you. Strike two. You're like the worst guesser ever. Why do you keep on answering food? Well, I did eat food today, but the answer I'm looking for isn't food. Yeah, you're definitely drunk. Right then, I'm putting my phone down now. I wish I could say it was fun playing your little game. I'm going to go to sleep. In that case, I'll tell you the correct answer. The answer was a man. Oh, that's nice. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. I bet that thought never crossed your mind. It would have been nice if you would guess right. Yeah, sure would have. Care to elaborate on what that's supposed to mean? Is that your creepy way of saying you got lucky? If you're bragging, I'm really not interested. Well, it was certainly a tasty time. Literally, what does that even mean? Man, you're being so weird. You really just don't get comedy. I was making a joke because the man I was with was a hunk. You mean your husband, right? So he's not a random man, he's your husband. So all of this was a creepy and confusing way to say you slept with your husband? That's beside the point. What are all these questions? Oh, I get it. You have no idea what I'm trying to say, do you? I didn't mean my husband. Are you sure you want to admit that over text? So you're telling me you slept with a man that wasn't your husband? Who was it then? I wouldn't ask if it were my husband, would I? Next question then. Who do you think that man was? I'll give you a hint. It's a man that you're very familiar with. You should know him quite well. How the hell should I know? I would really take a beat and think about what I'm doing if I were you. You're admitting to me that you've had an affair. What the hell are you doing? I don't want to hear anything about that. Why would you tell me this? You still don't get it, do you? Hey, race a big hint. The guy's name starts with T and ends in ump. Trump. Trump who? It's pretty unbelievable that you're having fun with this. His full name is Trump Donald. A.K.A. Your Husband. Ah, uh, what are you talking about? I doubt you're with Trump right now. 
He's out drinking with his friends at their high school reunion right now. Yep, the reunion is going on right now. And that's exactly where I am. Cut the crap. Can you be serious for just two minutes and explain what the hell is going on? Well, it's not a high school reunion, it's just a regular old reunion. A reunion between two people. We are enjoying an intimate time together. If you need proof, I'll gladly send you a picture. You are honestly the scum of the earth. What's seriously wrong with you? Are you seriously sleeping with my husband? I swear, if you're lying, I'm going to kill you. Either way, I'm going to kill you. What kind of sociopath goes behind their friend's back and sleeps with their husband? That's me. You're seriously so mad right now. Of course I am, you idiot. Do you have any idea how awful what you're doing is? I mean, probably not if you were turning it into some sick game. I mean, I guess maybe I do. But knowing and caring are different things. I would not admit to these things if I didn't know what I was getting into. We both are prepared for the consequences. Nothing can stop the love between us. We can handle anything that comes our way. Wow, whatever. I don't even know what to say. So what's your end game here? May I remind you you're a married woman with a family? I don't know, they'll go with their dad or something. Being a mom sucks anyway. I hate housework and having to deal with those kids. Those brats are better off with their father. Even if we get divorced, I wouldn't be very much interested in taking care of them anyway. I've never in my life heard something so heartless. Trump and I were thinking about getting remarried after this all blows over. Once that happens, you'll never have to deal with any of the baggage from my old family. Seriously? You just called your kids baggage? Yeah, that's what they are. Or maybe ankle weights would be better. They really slow me down and stop me from doing what I want to do. Isn't this better for everyone? The kids don't need a mom that's not into it. Their dad will be a great father for them and support them more than I would. That's the first rational thought you've made this entire conversation. If anything, you're the baggage to them. They don't need a person like you in their lives. They really got the short end of the stick with you as their mother. Regardless, you know that this is going to be a really traumatic experience for them, right? One day, they're going to be old enough to understand what you did and why you did it. That's going to really mess them up mentally. Not to mention the amount of stress you're going to put on your husband. I don't care about that. Do you know what's the most important thing in the world? Money. There's nothing else that is more important. That's where your husband comes in. He's going to make sure I never have to worry about money ever again. I can buy whatever I want whenever I want. He's the perfect husband. Whatever. You can do what you want. You two have completely betrayed me. I don't care what you do or say to me anymore. Really? You're okay with that? You're the one who's going to have a tough time if you get divorced. You'll never be able to support yourself financially without Trump. You're going to give up that easily. Yes. You can do what you want to. I don't care anymore. And I think you've caught it backwards. You're the one that's really going to have a rough time. Not me. What are you talking about? I'm not going to have to worry about anything in my life anymore. Oh, by the way, you're going to have to leave the house very soon. I'm going to be living in that house from today. You can take your kids with you. That's absolutely not going to happen. Oh, wait a sec. You don't know, do you? Wow, I can't believe this. This is actually so perfect. Did Trump tell you this house is his? I hope not, because that would be a very big lie. Not only is this house under my name, I and I alone paid off the mortgage already. Trump didn't contribute one cent to it. Wow, that's a pretty pathetic attempt at a lie. 
I thought you said you didn't care. Why are you trying to lie to me? I've never seen or heard about you working a day in your life. There's no way that house is yours. Did you think you'd trick me? No tricks here. Actually, why don't you come by tomorrow? Yeah, that's the plan. I'm coming to move in like I just said. But why would you ask me to come? First of all, I need to see what you're claiming is going on with my own two eyes. Then I'll have you and your unemployed bum of a lover take out all the crap he has in my house. I'm sorry. Unemployed? What's that supposed to mean? OMG, is this real life? Do I really get to be the one to break this news to you? First of all, let me guess that he told you he was filthy rich or that he was the owner of some company. Does that sound familiar? Or maybe told you that he owns multiple properties across different states? Or that he has a large inheritance that he can live off for the rest of his life? It doesn't matter what he said to you. If it was anything other than, I'm an unemployed loser, it's a lie. Wow, you are so salty. I mean, I get it. I did just steal your husband. He told me all about how successful he is, and it is most certainly not a lie. You can stop trying to make yourself feel better. I thought so. Well, if you believe that, why don't you two come on down here tomorrow and try and kick me out of this house? Let's see what his reaction is to that. We don't have to do that because you're going to already be gone when we get there. Why should we have to go through the trouble of confronting you about it? You're getting divorced, so why don't you just leave the house as soon as possible? Fine, be that way. Well, when you do come tomorrow, I will certainly still be living in this house and plan on continuing to do so. The only person that will be waiting for you will be my company's lawyer, who I have on retainer. She knows all about the affair and your insane demands. They'll be happy to explain what will happen to both of you moving forward. You seriously got your lawyer involved? Wait, your company's lawyer? What does that mean? Like, your company's lawyer? You have your own company? First she'll speak with my soon-to-be ex-husband about the divorce proceedings. Then she'll have a talk with you about the possible lawsuit I can file against you for the damage you've done to my family. I thought it would be best for you to be present. You're serious? Of course I'm serious. Dead serious. Because I'm such a nice person, it'll give you one day to prepare. I'd like you to talk with Trump and let me know what your plan is. You can get back to me whenever you feel like it. I hope you've got it in touch with your husband. I'm about to call him in a few minutes. Hold on a second. No point in getting agitated now. You can take your time and think about it. I was under a completely different impression than the truth. I was told that Trump was a successful entrepreneur and he was going to financially support me for the rest of my life. He was going to take me on long vacations overseas and I would never have to work again. Sorry to break it to you, but like I said, he's totally unemployed right now. I think the correct term is, he's a house husband. He'll never be able to make your fantasy dreams come true. You're going to have to struggle financially for the rest of your life now that you've chosen him. You're really going to have a hard time making ends meet. I can't believe this. He lied to me. Why would he lie to me? Serves you right. You're going to have to take care of yourself from now on. You can't rely on him financially. If anything, you'll have one more person you'll have to support. Or you could try and force him to get a job. It's not like he's never worked. I think he used to flip burgers back in college. I'm sure he's very far from the picture he painted for you. I can't believe this. He told me he would take care of me and I wouldn't have to work a day for the rest of my life. That's a nice story, but it's all a lie. He won't be able to support you. In all likelihood, you're going to have to take care of him. He's the laziest person I've ever known. He's never been able to keep a job for a long term. I was willing to take care of him given our past and because of my financial situation. 
but now that I know what he's been doing, I suddenly don't care one bit. You can have him and take care of him for the rest of your life. Be my guest. I'm not going to take care of him. I don't have the money. You know that. Then I suppose you are both going to live a miserable life together. You're never going to be able to live off his income alone. There is no way I am going to accept this. Hey there. How are you? It's been a while since we last spoke, hasn't it? How have you been? I'm as happy as ever. What do you want? Why are you contacting me? Wow, aren't you cold? You should be grateful I reached out after all this time. How about being happy or a little surprised? How about no? To be honest, I'm surprised that you contacted me after all that has happened. Well, actually, I had a little errand to run and am back in the old neighborhood. I just passed my old house. I see. And what brought you back here? Oh, nothing special. I think I can guess. I saw your ex-husband the other day. We were both taking out the garbage at the same time so we started chatting. He seemed okay. But to be honest, I thought he had lost a lot of weight. We talked about everything that went down and how things have been lately. Sounds like you haven't paid the money you owe him from the divorce. Oh, did you? Very fitting for you two to talk there since you were both thrown away by your spouses. Wow. Very unnecessary. Why would you talk about those things outside? You know other people could overhear you. What if they heard what you said and started to spread false rumors? You should be careful about what you say in public. Other people might start gossiping. Well, maybe you shouldn't have done what you did if you were worried about people hearing about it. Please, you're a little too late to be concerned about that. Everybody in our neighborhood knows what's going on. They do? Everyone knows? Yep. Everyone knows what you did. You and my sleazeball ex were the talk of the town. Everyone knows what happened. That's besides the point, though. You've been dodging the payments you owe him, haven't you? Wow, he's still going on about that? So annoying. He just can't let it go, can he? He's just bitter because he still wants to be with me. Oh my god. You should get over yourself. Not that I care, but how's little T? Little T? Who's that? Oh. Oh, you mean Trump. Yeah, that's who. It's a nickname I've given him for several reasons ever since the affair. I haven't contacted him at all since we separated. There's nothing for me to say to him anymore after I found out what he was doing behind my back. He never even tried to give an explanation or excuse, so I've taken this silence from him as an admission of guilt. Well, that's the way he said he wanted it. I see. So, how is he? How would I know? We sort of had a falling out after the last time we spoke. You should know as well as I do. He lied to me about him being able to financially support me. Without his money, what is the point of being with him? We separated after that without getting married. Oh, really? Does that annoy you? What can I say? He's unemployed and has no money. A far cry from the fairy tale story he told me. I guess so. You value money over everything else, don't you? Yes, that's true. But you don't have to say it like that. It sounds like I didn't care about him. I did. But only because he told me he had money. Sure, the fact that he said he would be able to support me financially was the most important thing, but it wasn't the only factor. That's nice. Anyway, I'm busy. If you have something to say, make it brief. Hey, now you're being quite rude. That's no way to treat someone who you haven't spoken to in a while. Let's talk a little while longer. Why would I ever want to do that? How about you? 
Did you get remarried? None of your business. See you in another life. Hey, don't be like that. Let me hear about how you're doing. Well, if you really want to know, my business is doing quite well. I've managed to relocate my offices into the city and also hire a few more personnel. We'll be going to see a client from out of state next week, which is going to be quite interesting. Well, if that's the case, I'm sure you have some spare for an additional team member, right? What do you mean? I'm just saying. Since your business seems to be doing well and expanding, you can afford one more hire. So you should hire me at your company. Why in the world do you think I would do that? Well, because you need more people. I need someone who is hardworking, reliable, punctual, and above all, willing to work hard and work cooperatively with others. You have none of those qualities. You're lazy, unreliable, and both you and I know that you are incapable of cooperating with other people. You're just as likely to give up on all the hard work and just sit there until it's time to leave. Not to mention, I absolutely hate your guts. Geez, it was that a suggestion. There's no need to get overly emotional about it. If you don't have any positions, you just need to say so. Even if I had a position open, you are the last person I would ever consider hiring. You're more likely to increase my workload. So the answer is no. What is this? I'm on a date. So what? Are you angry? Sorry if you are. I just bumped into him. Your current husband. So it sounds like you knew that I was remarried. I didn't know two weeks ago when I contacted you. I see. Remember how I said I was in the area the other day? I saw this really handsome guy come out. So your little errand was really just stalking my house? I wouldn't say that. I was simply surveying the area. Particularly my old street. I just happened to learn that it was your husband. How did you manage to get two handsome husbands? Be careful, they may just be into you for your money. Wow, you are one to talk about that. So, what are you up to this time? I'm just going to view the merchandise. I know that you run your own business. So I was thinking, the guys that surround you are probably really handsome. I can probably sample a few things. I mean, if they do end up leaving you for me, I guess that means they were never that good in the first place. The way I see it, I'm doing you a favor. Wow. So you're back for round two. Do you have a soul? Is stealing men from people the only way you feel self-worth? I don't care what you say. Everything in this world depends on the end results. I can't help it if the men end up choosing me. I see. But we still haven't developed a relationship like that yet. I just happened to see him out in public and I introduced myself. We met up a few times already. I see. Well, you haven't changed. You're still easygoing. Although you should be used to getting your husband stolen at this point, right? You're going to be known as the woman who gives husbands away from now on. How sad. Whatever you say. Geez, doesn't sound so depressed. This time I know for sure you'll get a rich guy. Thanks. Really? You're going to save my life. He's rich? Just like I told you before. Money is everything. I can tell by the way he dresses. He has money. He's a businessman or something. I see. I understand now. Yep, you've finally caught on. At this point, as long as he's got lots of money, anybody is fine. So my next target is him. Sorry. It's going to be my second time stealing your husband. No problem. I sure hope you don't make the same mistake as last time. One, you've got to be kidding me. In returning this. Bring me a better husband. You are a literal psychopath. 
Man, I'm happy I warned Thomas about you before you got to him. We'd known that Miss Sammy would descend on us. Miss Sammy? What the hell is that? Oh, sorry, sorry. We've just been calling you that. Your last name is Tina, isn't it? The same as Sammy's middle name. The name defines your high maintenance. I've changed your contact name to Sammy as well. Wow. That's so childish. Making fun of other people? You're being extremely rude. Not to mention you're a huge liar. Sure, I've made fun of you. But I'm not a liar. What are you implying that I lied about? I was obviously not lying about Trump not having any money. And my current husband is unemployed. Did I say something that would make you believe something else? Well, you didn't tell me the truth about them, so that's the same as lying. I think you're bitter from getting tricked twice. Shut your mouth. That's right. I was tricked. You should feel pity for me. It'll stick a knife in my back. Actually, let me rephrase that. You were so caught up in the idea of stealing a rich man, you didn't have the common sense to look into the claims they were making. Trump was a scumbag through and through. Once we got married, he became a lazy piece of garbage and didn't contribute to anything. On the other hand, Thomas actually wanted to continue working after we got married. But after a very productive and healthy discussion, we decided he'd be better off as a house husband. House husband? Are you kidding? That's just a fancy way to say he's a lazy bum too. Actually, it's not. It's really common these days for the husband to stay home and the wife supports the family. We don't live in the 50s anymore. I really wanted to continue working and so did he. But we agreed financially, it would make more sense if only I kept my job for now. He gets a sense of satisfaction out of doing housework and he loves my son. It seemed like a win-win to have him stay home and take care of everything while I went to work. My son absolutely loves him too. I was worried about if he was going to accept him, but things have been going great. Oh, I see. That must mean you're really successful after all. That's right. Anyway, let's get back on track. What's wrong with you trying to steal my husband yet again? I heard you pretended that we were friends, but when you met up with him you were all over him? Yeah, that's not okay. Not like it matters because he's never seen you again. Wow, he's soft. Did he really complain about a beautiful woman showing interest? It sounds like he was just intimidated by me. He shouldn't be so sensitive, you know. If your wallet was as big as your ego, you'd never need to try and steal a rich man away from their wives. Anyway, you're completely not his type. Plus, he knows everything you've done anyway. So he's actually quite turned off. Like I said, you'll never see him again. Block his number and never come near him ever again. Okay, I get it. House husbands aren't my type either. They'll never speak to him ever again. Whatever, just do as you're told. You should tell him to stop being so sensitive. People can do whatever they want, so he should be able to handle it instead. I don't care what you think. I just want you to never speak to him again. How's it going? Well, hey race the person I thought I would never hear from again. I actually thought I blocked you. Now I'm regretting that I forgot to. Wow. There's no need to be that rude, you know. I have something to tell you today. Can you guess what it is? I'm sure you're going to tell me anyway. Just say what you want to say. I'm going to get back together with Trump again. Wow. All is right in the world. There isn't anything I could possibly care about less. I just wanted to let you know how happy I am. I'm finally going to be rich. That's nice. Come on. You can pretend to be interested. Trump said that he is running a business now and it's going quite well. And he's become Rick. So once again, 
He told you that he was Rick and you took his word as the truth. Let's see how this word out. He's not lying this time. He was the one that reached out to me. He said that he wanted to get back together with me. Well, it isn't that romantic. You are jealous, aren't you? No, not at all. You obviously can't read people's feelings very well. I really don't care. I have absolutely no interest in him. Or you, for that matter. He decided to contact me instead of you. I broke up with him because he was unemployed, but it seemed he couldn't forget about me. He came back to me and begged me to get back together with him to give him another chance. He says he now has some legitimate business opportunities now, which are really promising. Why in the world am I hearing about this? I honestly do not care one single bit what he does or what you do. Frankly, I'm relieved to hear that he's interested in someone other than me. I'm just glad to have him out of my life. Like I told you, I want to let you know how happy I am. I wanted to stick it to you. I'll finally be able to buy whatever I want. I'm thinking of going to a dealership today to buy a new car. I'm going to buy a new sports car. I want a red one to match the new designer shoes I picked out. Excuse me for a moment while I go make some popcorn. You sure do have a warped perception of the world. Have fun buying your new car. Have a happy life. Whatever you do, whatever you're up to, I really don't care. Do you not see what's happening here? I beat you. I'll be happy forever. Living in my castle and buying whatever I want whenever I want. And you'll be left working for the rest of your life. You should be completely jealous of me. You beat me? I actually enjoy my job and take pride in what I do. It's highly satisfying. Like I said, it's perfectly clear that you and I have different views of life. You want to be pampered and take responsibility for nothing. And I want to take control of my life and challenge myself. Well, you can have a happy life with your choices, although I'll never understand it. Ill happy and fulfilled with my life too. Whatever. See you later, maybe in another life. I'll send you more happy episodes in the future. You should look forward to it. Please help me. I can't believe what's going on. Do you have a credit card I can borrow? You're the only one I can trust. Well, look who it is. I haven't heard from you in over two months, and this is the first thing you say? What's going on? He tricked me again. I couldn't buy anything I wanted, let alone a new car. Oh dear. Who could have ever predicted this outcome? Even though he promised me he'd get me a new car. Remember, the one that I told you about? We even went to a dealer, and I picked the car that I wanted. I was so excited all day because today was supposed to be the day I went to go pick it up. But when I got there, the people of the dealership told me that it wasn't there. Instead, they kept asking me how I'd be paying for it. What? I'm not completely following. Trump wasn't with you? He said he was too busy today, and that I should go by myself. He told me that since he was just handing over the car, that he didn't need to be there. I was a little disappointed, but still excited that I was finally going to have my own car. Well, it sounds like he hasn't told you the total truth. Have you contacted Trump? Of course I did. But I can't reach him. Whenever I call, it keeps on saying that the number is disconnected. Hmm, why on earth could that be? You don't think it's because he tricked you yet again and is getting revenge for you dumping him, is he? Of course not. That's impossible. Well, to be honest, it sounds like something that Trump would do. He tried buying a sofa under my name one time. I got really annoyed at him, so afterwards he stopped doing it. His name is on the contract papers. It says my name. Oh, you're out of luck then. What? I can't afford this car. It's over 100k. You need to help me. They told me if I canceled now, 
I do have to pay so much money for termination fees. Why in the world do I need to help you? I would rather light my money on fire than give it to you. Don't try and pretend to be the victim because it's not going to work. You have to pay no matter what, so at least pay the termination fee since that'll probably be less than the cost of the car. Why am I even giving you advice? This is so not my problem. I need you to pay for it. I need you to come back to Earth. I will absolutely not be paying a single cent. I realized something really important. Having a rich husband isn't important. Having rich friends is. I was stupid to have relied on a husband. So you'll help me, won't you? We're friends, aren't we? You are my mortal enemy. I hate that you're still living, breathing, and complicating my life with your stupidity. Not only are we not friends, if I saw you drowning, I'd throw rocks at you from the shore to speed things up. Well, that's not very nice. If you want a car, you pay for it yourself. But before you even think about buying a car, there are more important things for you to be worried about paying. Like the back payment from your divorce and child support you haven't paid in months. How about you pay for what you owe first, and then you can buy what you want? Stop trying to lecture me. You fell for Trump's lie yet again because you're so greedy. Serves you right. He must have held quite a grudge when you broke up with him. He's still a walking piece of human trash, but I don't blame him for what he's done this time. You're not going to abandon your friend, are you? I can't buy this car without your help. Honestly, you can't be helped, can you? You're the lowest of the low. I have no interest in helping people like you. I hope you die alone in debt. Never talk to me again. Sonny had no choice but to cancel buying the car. The dealership was quite upset, and she's being forced to pay half the cost of the car because of it. I can't believe she didn't understand that she was going to have to pay, even though she had provided her signature. She must have really thought that Trump was going to make all the payments. After about a month, Trump sent her a message saying, Serves you right. It seems that Trump had already gotten sick of Sonny's request for expensive gifts and had already decided to end their relationship. As a last act of defiance, he had set her up to get embarrassed and humiliated and end up with nothing. The reason I found out was, he had apparently been planning this for a long time and had bragged about it to his friends afterwards. I heard about it from one of my employees, who told me the details. They were both acting like spoiled children for a while. It sounds like Sunny still hasn't paid anything she owes her husband. As a result, result, she had to declare bankruptcy. The courts began seizing her assets, which was quite a sight to see. And to be honest, it was a little satisfying to see the judge lecture her in court. Her face was bright red when the verdict was announced. I would have liked to say it was from embarrassment, but knowing her, it was likely from anger that she didn't get what she wanted. She had to go back to living with their parents, working day and night to cover the payment. It seems she is living a quiet life now with the minimal money that's left over. In living a peaceful life now, without having to worry about people who do not want to take responsibility for themselves. It's doubtful I ever see either of them ever again. So it's a huge relief. I think it was a good lesson for us all. I learned that I didn't need a man in my life in order to be fulfilled. My work is getting busier right now. So is sure it would just be a distraction. My son has learned to become more independent. I remember that she used to be a lot more attention-seeking when I was around more. She seems to have become more confident in herself, and has learned to take care of herself. She's even gotten more friends, which is great to see. I am happy to see her smile more. And as for Trump and Sonny, although I hope I will never see them again. I hope they have learned a very hard and expensive lesson. And they won't ruin any other people's lives.